Hey everybody, Josh Sigurdsson in World Alternative Media here, and we are joined by Jeanette Finnicum, of course, unfortunately the widow of Lavoy Finnicum, uh, someone who was murdered by the government, and I wanted you, I, I know you've been through it enough times before, but can you just give us a bit of a insight into what kind of person Lavoy was and uh, how it led to him fighting and standing up for what he believed in and unfortunately being killed by the government? Well, first and foremost, Lavoy was a family man. You know, he was home every day taking care of us and our 12 children. It is a yours, mine, and ours and their situation. A lot of people go, wow, 12 kids. But um, he was a family man. He was a man of God. He was a rancher um, in his later years. He, he worked his whole entire life to get that ranch. And, and so then he began to notice a change in the atmosphere of America and noticing that life was changing through regulation and it, it, it was very discouraging to him and he wanted to do something about that and, and he was a great teacher he was a great storyteller he could tell a story and you would be like riveted in it and so he wrote that book only by blood and suffering regaining lost freedom and that really was the beginning of his activism I've read that book by the way and it's an incredible book I'm glad you liked it um, he wanted that book to change hearts and minds to get us into action to to teach our children to remind us what type of country we we the founders had envisioned for us um, and I think that book did all of those things and is something that I noticed really stood out about him was that he stood up for God and not for some religion called government, right? He believed Absolutely. in individualism. And uh, if you could just go into uh, some of his activism uh, with the Bundy Ranch and the Hammond family and what happened that day in uh, 2016. Well, just like I said, after the book, um, the Bundy family was in the headlines, and he just didn't want to listen to the news, because you know, the news doesn't give accurate information, and so he wanted to hear it from the source. He went to visit with Clive and Bundy, he met with him the night before the standoff with the BLM and law enforcement down there in Nevada, and he was invited to come back, and so he was one of the first horse riders on, on site that morning. He rode with the Bundys. He came home, but then after that particular incident, he he began to, you know, ponder and meditate on where am I in this whole land rights issue? Where am I? Where do I stand? And so he really did some soul searching, which led him to his decision to do, to, to, to basically stand and say, I will not sign a contract with the BLM. And so then he started to experience some of his own oppression from the BLM and other sources, um, which is profiled and, and put out in our video that we just did. It, the video is a three-part docu-series called Lavoy Finnicum Dead Man Talking. So if you're interested to get to know more about that, please tap into that. It's it's very well done. I'm, I'm so Very. Pleased. It was an incredibly well done film. I, I, it, it just, it's, it's amazing. It. I was so pleased with um, Center for Self-Governance who produced it and and then Jeremy, uh, Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Jeremiah Lofus, who is the filmmaker. And um, we have original music that uh, was written especially for this documentary. It's just so well done and it really it really does tap into who my husband was, what he was standing for, and why he went to Malheur. And that why he went to Malheur will be in part two and part three. But then again, after all of that, um, it came to the attention, the Hammond family was back in the headlines. They were heading back off to jail for the second time. He was just really upset about that. And we got a call New Year's Day asking if he would like to go and stand up in Oregon. And so he went with Ryan Bundy. He was supposed to be back in a couple of days, but as fate would have it, there was another direction that the, the demonstration would take, and that was out at Malheur, 35 miles outside of Burns, Oregon. And so my husband was, I believe, set up, ambushed, and then assassinated and um, by out-of-control government. We, there was all levels of... Uh, law enforcement authority there, you know, from the FBI to the BLM law enforcement to the local sheriff's department and state, Oregon state police departments. And um, that should never happen to any American citizen, 
to be, they, they called it a traffic stop. How do you have a traffic stop that's planned where you have an elite SWAT team from Washington show up? That That's kind of, right there you know that it wasn't a routine traffic stop as they reported in the beginning. And he wasn't armed. I mean, that's, that's one of the point. things. He, he wasn't armed. Uh, people looking at the video can clearly see he's not reaching for a gun. He's obviously, uh, it looked like he was wincing and grabbing his side. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, that is one of my theories because they were asked to de-arm themselves before going to John Day when they were speaking in front of 300 people. The sheriff was going to be present in John Day. He knew about all of them coming. That's another um, thing that I need to explain is that in at Malheur, people were able to come and go as they pleased. They were not you know, cordoned off by the, the by the government or by law enforcement in any way. My husband took me into town. We had breakfast at the local restaurant. We went to church at the local church there. There was no sense of fear. I think the fear was coming from the people in town where they were experiencing a takeover of their town because FBI had come in, taken, closed the airport, closed the schools, put up barricades. There were over hundreds of vehicles, armed vehicles. It was, it was like walking into a militarized zone. So the fear was not from the people that had demonstrated at Malheur. The fear came from within the town from the law enforcement. And there's no doubt that he was murdered and assassinated by the government. There's no getting around that. Uh, and I wanted to ask you about um, the court proceedings and where you're at in uh, finding some form of justice in this horrific story. Yes, we have filed our wrongful death complaint. We are waiting on the defendant's next move, which is most likely going to be motions for dismissal. But we are going to fight each and every one of them. Our family is resolute in finish, finishing this and seeing it to the end. We want to have this case brought before a jury. We want accountability for the, for the out-of-control government. Absolutely. Um, finishing it off, what would you th what would you say Lavoie's legacy would be uh, going forward? We're a couple years past now. What would you say his legacy is? I would say that his legacy is one of a man who believed in God and was not afraid to let everyone know that he loved his God. He he was a man who loved his country, and he stood for his country and he gave his all. And I think too that he has inspired so many people across this country to do the same thing. And I think really that's his legacy, is how he has touched the hearts and minds of people all across this United States. And how can all the people across these United States help you in uh, bringing you to the next level and finding justice and uh, finding an answer to this uh, horrible story? Well, you know, fighting the government isn't cheap and they have an endless, bottomless purse. Uh, so if, if if you could support us by uh, going to our website and, and donating to our legal fund or purchasing Lavoie's book, you'll enjoy the book, that's for sure. Um, we have a lot of items on there for sale that are all going, all the proceeds are going to help pay for our legal fees at onecowboystandforfreedom.com. Thank you for fighting. I appreciate you talking with us. Thank you. Like what you see here, OM? Don't forget to check the links below. GoFundMe, Patreon, we can't do it without you. Any donation is very much appreciated, especially as we are so overwhelmingly demonetized and censored by YouTube as the ADL comes in and flags all of our content as hate speech. Also, check our Bitcoin address in the description as well as on the screen for you to scan if you please. And also find us at steemit.com at at Josh Sigurdsson, the future of social media where you get paid in the upvote of your post in Steam, the cryptocurrency. But until next time, this is Josh Searson signing out from World Alternative Media. Find the truth, be the change.